So my name is uh, Eric uh, Brun, as uh, David just said, and uh, I will uh, speak uh, of the IPCC. Uh, the name is uh, for Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. So uh, I think that everyone heard about that. Uh, and uh, how uh, the IPCC works, mainly the reports, are used in the context of uh, the climate change negotiations. And uh, also I will uh, mention what happened uh, during the COP28 because we, we had uh, a decision made on what we call the Global Stock Tech, uh, which refers a lot to uh, the last IPCC reports. So I will just start by me very quickly, just <laughs> uh, so you see uh, my background. So I was, uh, I was a scientist uh, in the French Met Service, Meteo France, for uh, 30 years. So I started to work on uh, snow modeling. It's mainly uh, uh, research uh, on uh, how to simulate the evolution of snow cover depending on weather conditions. It was first for avalanche purposes, but uh, it turned also to, to be used uh, uh, in the context of uh, climate change, for example. What will be the consequences of uh, an increase of warming in the Alps in terms of uh, uh, the development of, of snow cover? So I've been director of this research center, which is a research center belonging both to University Meteo France and uh, CNRS. Uh, I became director of uh, uh, the National Center for Meteorological Research, uh, uh, which means that I was a scientific director of uh, the French Med Service for about 10 years. I was a past president of the International Glaciological Society, uh, president of the French Polar Institute, and also a chair of the Scientific Council of uh, Institut Pierre Simon Laplace here in Paris for, for eight years. So after 30 years dedicated to, to science and science management, I decided to uh, uh, end my career by uh, working for uh, public policy uh, in the context of climate change and uh, uh, I was appointed uh, IPCC focal point for the French government and uh, I will uh, detail that a bit uh, later. Uh, I was also responsible of uh, the national policy for the adaptation of France to climate change uh, and I was a French representative uh, in the European Union group, we call it uh, science for climate change negotiation. So I will not speak uh, about me again, but uh, just to look mainly what we call the uh, physical sciences, that was my background, but also uh, uh, public policy. So uh, re the recognition of uh, climate change uh, is something uh, which comes from a very, very long time, and uh, it has not awaited the creation of the IPCC uh, to be known. And uh, at the end of the 19th century, there were already works done mainly by three uh, scientists, uh, Joseph Fourier, John Tyndall, and uh, Svante Arrhenius. Uh, at that time, there was no increase of CO2 in the, in the atmosphere, but these scientists, uh, they were just investigating what would become the climate uh, uh, of the Earth uh, in case of a change in CO2. Very, it was very academic in terms of uh, 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 the way to approach uh, the matter. And uh, Arrhenius uh, in 1896 uh, uh, published a paper where he says that uh, a, double, a doubling of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere would lead to about uh, plus five degrees of global temperature, which was not, uh, not bad at that time. So it's very amazing because at that time there were new computers at all to describe the climate of the, the Earth, no models, no things like that. It, it was just based on uh, uh, very sound physical assumptions. Uh, for the l next 60, 70 years, nobody almost worked on uh, greenhouse gas effect, on CO2, on climate change. And, uh, but in the 1970s, uh, the interest uh, popped up again, and uh, there was a report uh, which was uh, uh, requested by the US Academy of Science. We call it the Charney Report, uh, published in 1979, uh, which it was a collective work of uh, about uh, 30, uh, 
scientist, and uh, one sentence in the conclusion is uh, the most probable global warming for doubling of CO2 uh, is to be near three degrees with a probable error of uh, plus minus 1.5 degrees. So very similar to what Frontier News said and very similar to what the IPCC says now, uh, as I will show it. So that was the state of uh, the knowledge uh, uh, at that time. Uh, and the interest of, on uh, climate change uh, uh, started to grow very slowly at that time because there were almost no signals uh, of any change. And uh, uh, I don't know, David, <laughs> I speak not, young people do not, probably do not do that, but at that time, the interest in terms of the effect of uh, uh, humankind on the climate was what would be the consequences <coughs> of a nuclear war. So we, we called it the nuclear winter and there were a small community, but working on uh, what would be the consequences of uh, a big war with a lot of bombs and so on on the climate. And the conclusion was that uh, we will be uh, under a cloud of dust and uh, leading to a significant decrease uh, of the temperature uh, uh, as it happened in the past, but due to very big volcano explosions. So uh, just, uh, uh, it's something which is not very known, but since the climate started to warm, so the interest in uh, greenhouse gas and uh, global warming uh, raised slowly, very slowly. Uh, and uh, there were some states, mainly the US, but also UK, uh, who were a bit uh, worrying about the fact that uh, uh, the climate change science could be led by uh, climate activists. That was uh, a major concern for them. And so they decided to, uh, uh, to, to launch the, the creation uh, of uh, uh, an intergovernmental body, which will be, which will be the VIPCC, in order to assess uh, uh, very objectively uh, what, are the now, what is uh, the knowledge uh, on climate change. So that's really the history. And uh, uh, there were almost no debate at that time, and so it has been relatively easy to create that. I'm not sure that uh, should it happen now, uh, we will be able to, to create such a thing, but that happens. Uh, in order to ensure the transparency, so the creation of the IPCC uh, uh, was accompanied by uh, procedures, very detailed procedures on how to assess the science and to prepare the report. But I will speak of that. And also they wanted uh, the states to have a control of uh, uh, the outcomes of the IPCC and to ensure the objectivity and the transparency uh, of the messages. That was really uh, something which was the main target during the creation. And uh, this control by the states happens mainly during the what we call the approval of the summary for policymakers. Uh, using transparent procedure, uh, having a really uh, uh, open science and so on, makes that the assessment reports of the IPCC have a universal scope uh, since their summaries uh, before being published, they must be approved line by line by all governments member of the IPCC. And as a member of the IPCC, it's uh, about the same membership of the UN uh, with uh, 195 countries, uh, governments. So if uh, we go to uh, the IPCC website and uh, do not hesitate in doing that, it's they have a very comprehensive website. You, you can find documents on how the IPCC is working. And uh, just picking up one of the slides which are available, they say uh, the role of the IPCC is to assess on a comprehensive, objective, open and transparent basis, the scientific, technical and socioeconomic information relevant to the understanding of the scientific basis of risk of human-induced climate change, its potential impacts and options for adaptation and mitigation. 
that's really the, the art of, of the goal. And uh, this goal has not changed uh, for uh, almost now uh, 30, 20, uh, 35 years. So and, uh, uh, we did not see any reason for changing that. Uh, the question is, when we are speaking about the physical science related to climate change, so naturally there, are, there were uh, in the past uh, some scientists uh, claiming that uh, it was not true, that uh, what we call uh, uh, climatoscepticism, but uh, well, it's not anymore the case. It happens sometimes, but it's very, very confidential. But the, the, the question is, the main question is uh, well, what kind of policy uh, will be necessary or will be able to mitigate climate change. Mitigating the climate change, it means just uh, limiting the increase in temperature in the long term. Usually the long term is uh, the end of this century. That's uh, 2100. Uh, and uh, so the science is supposed to say what would work in terms of mitigation and adaptation, but it should not be prescriptive regarding the policy of the different governments. So it should be policy relevant. It means that uh, uh, the government should find in the IPCC report uh, a list of options, and uh, they should have uh, find information about how will it work, uh, what is the cost of such measure, and something like that. But they, uh, they should not find, in any case, uh, um, uh, what we call a recommendation. For example, uh, an IPCC report cannot say uh, the states should do that. So uh, say if they do that, uh, <laughs> it could be uh, uh, efficient uh, and so on. So it, it means that uh, when we offer, we, we are scientists, uh, we discuss that, <coughs> write a report they have to take care that they make no recommendation at all. And to, when you are in the medias, the IPCC says that we should do that. That's not the case. Uh, it's not formulated that way. But well, if naturally, if we, are, if we look carefully to the different messages, so we understand that's what we have to do. But the IPCC doesn't say that. So the, the IPCC is really yeah. at a uh, as to respect a line between science and policy, as I mentioned, and uh, its uh, governing bodies and its interaction with science scientific community. Uh, so uh, is uh, uh, controlled by, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a set of procedures. Uh, first, any decision made by the IPCC is to be done by a what we call a, a plenary, it means a general assembly of the governments, member of uh, the IPCC. Any decision, uh, publishing a report, uh, uh, deciding what kind of report they, they will do uh, during a cycle and so on. So it's decided by the governments by consensus. It means that uh, it's, we, we are like in the, in the UN, that all uh, member states, all countries uh, need to agree on the program for the next year and also on the content of the report. So you, you, you imagine the, the, the challenge. Uh, the jury is at the, uh, the plenary, which meets uh, about uh, one or two times per year in, uh, in normal time. And uh, there is a bureau. Uh, and the bureau is made not of government representative, but it, it may, it's made of scientists and they are uh, the scientists are elected once every seven to eight years, what we call a cycle. And uh, once they are select, uh, uh, elected by the plenary, so they, have, they are in charge of the program. So I, I will come back to that later. And the bureau uh, made of elected scientists has uh, four, five, three working groups and one uh, uh, one task force, and these working groups uh, work, uh, respectively the first one on the physical science basis, uh, where, where we are in terms of climate, uh, where we go uh, according to different uh, 
assumption of uh, greenhouse gas emission uh, and so on. Working group two uh, addresses uh, the impact of climate change, the risk and uh, the mean uh, of adaptation. And working three works on mitigation of climate change and uh, as uh, I said before, it means how we can limit the warming of the planet or even decreasing the temperature. And the last of the four uh, really uh, operational bodies is a task force on uh, national greenhouse gas inventories. And the aim of this task force is to produce uh, guidelines, universal guidelines, in order to account for the greenhouse gas emission of the different uh, human activities. You know, it's very important uh, to know that uh, uh, each country has to report, not to the IPCC, but to uh, uh, the UN system, to report how much greenhouse gas they emit every year. So we, we do that usually six months after the end of uh, a civil year. And uh, uh, how much CO2, how much methane, uh, how much aerosol, and so on. And to do that, they need to uh, apply, they must apply guidelines. For example, if you extract one ton of uh, coal, yeah, there are different types of coal, but uh, of this type of coal, so Y ton of coal correspond to X tons of CO2, of methane, and so on. And they, uh, so they, they use the, the knowledge we have about uh, the uh, uh, economic activity uh, of uh, their country and they report to the UN. And that's the way that we know uh, how much greenhouse gas are emitted by each country, but also collectively. And so to do that, we apply uh, a methodology uh, uh, which is uh, produced by the IPCC, and which is the universal reference, which is not contested at all. And to produce the report, naturally, uh, this report, uh, probably uh, uh, you see uh, approximately the, the kind of uh, work it is, but it's, for example, a working group uh, two report, it's about uh, uh, 3,000 pages. So you imagine that it's not the uh, member of the bureau who writes the report, but that's the scientific community. And so there is, uh, outside of the IPCC, there are authors which are selected and so on, in order to produce the different chapter, and why the different chapter, but I, I will explain that. And the community scientific committee can review these reports before they are released. And uh, uh, there is a, a procedure which ensures the transparency. I will describe that now. So a few words about the Bureau. It's, it's very political, the Bureau, because they are scientists, but they are elected once every eight years. They cannot be, uh, uh, they can resign, but nobody resigns usually. But so they stay uh, on their seat for a very long time. And so during the election process, which happened once every eight years approximately, as I said, so it's very important to ensure a balance in terms naturally of uh, uh, scientific uh, discipline, because we, we need to have uh, economists, we need to have uh, uh, specialists of the risk, we have also naturally to have uh, climate moderators and so on. Uh, and uh, you need also to ensure that uh, you have a regional balance and the countries are very, uh, very attentive about that. Uh, and there is uh, a regional distribution uh, for ensuring the inclusivity. And uh, I have, so you can see uh, the number of uh, uh, elected uh, bureau members you have for each region. Uh, it's they say region, but it's a region according to a definition by uh, the uh, WMO, World Meteorological Organization. Uh, also, the IPCC uh, tries to do its best to ensure also a gender balance and also to have uh, enough uh, renewal between uh, one bureau to the next bureau. So in order to avoid that uh, the same scientists are elected for uh, free cycle, for example, for 20 years. So it happens sometimes, but uh, uh, usually there is at least uh, about 50% of the bureau uh, members who are new for each cycle. 
And there are countries uh, which are always members of the Bureau. That's not written in any procedure, but uh, uh, Saudi Arabia from the very beginning, because uh, naturally they have the support from uh, uh, many uh, oil producers, for example, to, to do that. Uh, but also uh, Germany, the US, China, or, uh, Russia was a member uh, of the Bureau uh, until the, the cycles where they were not able to be elected because of the uh, national context. Uh, so uh, the legitimacy of the IP IPCC uh, comes naturally from uh, the fact that all countries are uh, members, but also the fact that uh, all the reports published uh, by the IPCC in the past uh, uh, were uh, are considered to be very very uh, uh, good uh, uh, science and uh, in terms of uh, climate change. So. Uh, we have just ended the sixth cycle and we have started the seventh cycle in uh, last August. Uh, and so each line here refers to uh, the, the subsequent uh, reports. And the first one was released in 1990. And uh, uh, by assessing uh, the, the available uh, literature, so uh, the IPCC concluded, uh, there were many conclusions, but regarding what will be the consequence of climate change that uh, a doubling of CO2 uh, will lead to plus 1.5 to 4.5. In 1985, so uh, for the first time, they say that we, the evidence suggests a discernible human impact on the climate. So it was really a, a major step. So uh, not only uh, we, we started to see that the climate was changing, but they were able to attribute at least a part of this change to human activities. And it's based on, you will see, uh, tens of thousands of papers published in the literature. Uh, no, not for the single result, naturally, but uh, in general for, for the reports. Uh, in uh, 2001, that was the first uh, assessment report, uh, the, uh, the report says that there is evidence that most of the warming of the last 50 years is human-made. So it was also something thing that not only changed, but it's really most of the change come from the human activities. So it was not known before. So there were naturally some individual papers in the literature claiming that, but there were also papers saying that it was not the case. But assessing the whole body of literature let me uh, made it possible for uh, the IPCC authors to conclude that uh, most of the warming came from human activities. So it was a time, 2001, when the government started really to think that there was something to, to do uh, again. In 2007, so it was the fourth assessment report. Uh, so we see that uh, the report says that uh, there is a a uh, uh, uni-equivocal warming, so there is no discussion about the fact that the climate is changing. Uh, most of the warming over the last 50 years is very probably due to the increase in anthropogenic greenhouse gases. And, and uh, 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 the projections for the end of the 21st century was an increase of plus 1.1 to plus 66 six degrees. So you see that uh, 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 the, the scale uh, was uh, widening, which was not very encouraging. It means that the science was, uh, uh, there was some contradiction between different hypotheses. But anyway, the, uh, the average point was very close to uh, what uh, was said before. Uh, the conclusion of the 2014 uh, report, the fifth one, that the human in front of the climate is clear. And there is already plus 0 0.8.5 degrees already observed. <coughs> okay. Uh, and uh, the sixth assessment re uh, report was published uh, uh, in 2023. If I it was made between 2022 and 2023, the, the publication. And uh, uh, the IPCC said that. Uh, 
uh, the temperature was 1.09 degrees higher than uh, during the Prenestrial uh, in 1850 uh, uh, increase in temperature and uh, the likely range of the total global surface temperature due to human activity is 0.7. It means that all the change we observed is due to human activities. Uh, okay. Uh, if we want also to see uh, the consistency of uh, uh, the, the works of the IPCC from one report to another one, so uh, you see a, a figure where it was used for the fifth assessment report and the numerical model used to project uh, the climate uh, were launched in 2005. So uh, here you have the, in color the temperature recorded its observation until 2023 and uh, on the left part of the diagram the between the the, the gray the gray zone that's what the model do when they know the climate which was already happening so the amount of uh, greenhouse gas and so on and the right part is a pure projection naturally because uh, it didn't use at all what happened between 20, f 20 uh, 2005 and uh, uh, 2023. And you see that uh, uh, the observed increased temperature is very close to, to the projection. And uh, there is already an estimate of 2023. Probably you, you heard that's really the warmest year recorded uh, since probably uh, 2 million years. And uh, uh, we are about 1.4. Here, in colors, you have different, uh, you have blue, red, and so on, but uh, the, the temperature recorded uh, globally on the Earth by different scientific groups, different university, or, so it's not exactly the same, but you see that there is a very good consistency between the observations. That's what happened. <coughs> Here, in, uh, it was made uh, from between 2005 and 2010, approximately, all numerical models used by the IPCC to calculate uh, climate projections were run by different groups. There were about 20 different university or uh, research organizations uh, developing a model at that time. So you, you have a, so it's the gray zone that's the average with the distribution uh, of the different models. And so from 1980 to 2005, they used the observed greenhouse gas emission. So that's, that's the reason we call it EINCAST. We know what has been uh, emitted in terms of greenhouse gas, and it's just to prove that the numerical models are able to simulate the climate when they know how much greenhouse gas there is in the atmosphere. And Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, so half, I mean, half of the range is above the recorded uh, temperature. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, so mo you see from one year to another one, that there is uh, uh, an internal variability, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, what happened due to natural processes. Mm -hmm. And you, you have... Uh, 10-year cycle, you have the 40-year cycle, you have different cycles in, in the climate systems. And here, in that case, the models are a bit higher than what happened. Uh, especially... The upper half of the gray zone does not have any data points. So that means that half of the projections were higher than... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's mainly due that during this period we had very few El Nino events and very small ones. And uh, uh, even, for example, uh, it, there was a very uh, big El Nino event in 1988. Uh, 98. And uh, after that, we had mainly La Nina, much more than usual, which made that uh, uh, the recorded temperature was below the projection because the projections doesn't know exactly the, the models, they simulate a Nino, La Nina 
process every year, but it doesn't correspond to the reality indeed. Because, uh, you know, we start from uh, here, it was started from 2005, and uh, the number of La Nino, La Nina doesn't depend only on uh, greenhouse gas effect. It depends also on the state of the, uh, of the ocean and so on. And f for a uh, relatively important number of years, it's below the projection. But now we, we have started again to have a Nino, and if you see, we started to be close. But the general shape, and globally, it's almost what happened. Okay, but it's not perfect naturally because there is a part of the natural viability which is not captured by this model. Okay. So, uh, for the, the IPCC, uh, has gained its legitimacy by the quality of the messages which are produced during the last uh, uh, 35 years. And I will give a, a bit more uh, insight on uh, how uh, a cycle happens. So, as I say, uh, the beginning of cycle starts with the election of a, of a bureau, and the bureau proposes to the governments uh, a program for the cycle. And uh, this program, once adopted by the, the governments, uh, uh, so uh, makes that there are reports. First, there are spe what you call special reports, which are published uh, at the beginning of the cycle, and the end of the cycle is made by the, uh, the main production, which is the assessment report. We, ha we have the assessment of the working group one on physical science, and working group two on adaptation, and working group three on mitigation. And at the very end of the cycle, we have what we call uh, the synthesis report uh, of uh, the cycle of the IPCC. And it was published in March. And it's really something which uh, uh, that's, that's the main productions uh, which uh, uh, is used by uh, uh, the media, uh, by uh, different uh, uh, political organizations and so on. So it's, it's really uh, the most important point. And so it takes time uh, for many reasons. And I, I, will mainly, I will explain that uh, for producing a single report, for example, a special report on the ocean or uh, so, uh, there is a procedure which takes about three or four years. So first, uh, there are experts and scientists uh, who are nominated in order to, uh, they are given for one week in order to discuss what is new in the literature compared to what was produced uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, so the, that's what we call a scoping meeting and uh, they propose uh, a structure for uh, uh, a report with uh, different chapters and uh, uh, also with uh, uh, the detailed content of the chapter. So it's discussed by the government, which approve uh, this uh, outline, and then there is uh, a call uh, for authors, and the governments propose authors, but also uh, uh, NGOs do that. And the Bureau of the APCC selects the author in order to uh, have uh, uh, typically a, a report is made by 100 or 150 authors. And they select them in order to, to have uh, a regional balance, uh, representation of the discipline, uh, gender balance, and so on. Uh, once the author are selected, they produce in only six months a uh, first draft, which is confidential but which is open for review by any experts who registers. <coughs> so there are thousands of, uh, and it's completely open and transparent, but there are thousands of experts which look at the first draft and which make comments. These comments are used by the authors, and six months later, they produce a second draft, which is reviewed by governments and also by uh, experts. Uh, and so we have all the chapters, we have uh, 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 the first uh, summary for policymakers and the governments and experts have two months for cri criticizing the report and sending the comments to the authors. The author change the report again and uh, they publish the final version of the chapters but a, also a draft version of the summary for policymakers which is reviewed again by the governments so it takes six months more two months for 
making the comments and uh, three or four months for the author to change uh, the summary according to the comments. And then a new uh, final version is submitted to the governments in plenary. So all the governments are represented. So uh, I will jump to that. Uh, yes. And do you know the number of people involved in this process? In yes. Uh, yes, it's, uh, you will see, I will give you the numbers. Yeah, you have for, just for the working group one report. And so the first order draft, uh, 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 there were 23,000 uh, comments for the first order draft. So by, uh, think, uh, I have not the name, the, the number here, but it's approximately five or 6,000 experts who volunteered to uh, review the report. And they produced uh, 23,000 comments. And all these comments were uh, uh, carefully uh, read by the, the authors and uh, they have to make a response to each of them and to change a report if they think that uh, uh, they need to do that. For the second order draft, we have, you have both experts and governments. There were 51,000 comments submitted to the authors. And for the final draft, which is only on the summary for policymaker, about 50 pages, uh, it was 3,158 comments submitted. So it explained why it takes so much time uh, for a report to be produced, but because there is more time dedicated to review and to respond to mm -hmm. the comments than to write the report itself. But that's, that's what makes a re that this report are universal because every government, but also every expert who registers has access to the confidential version uh, of the report. They are not allowed naturally to, uh, to diffuse them to anyone, but, but they are allowed to make any comments, for example, saying that uh, for, but there are many scientists who say, ah, oh, my, my paper uh, is not cited, don't you have forgotten what I said? Well, that's, uh, but it's part of the game, naturally, it's in order to, to ensure that there is really a comprehensive consideration of uh, the literature. Uh, but also there are governments, mainly, saying that, ah, you say that, but uh, uh, it's not really uh, what we can uh, uh, conclude from this kind of paper and so on. So they write the comments and the authors read the comment and they decide whether they take it, they change something or not. So it's really a, a process uh, and for any, any of the report of the APCC for one cycle, for example, there were uh, six reports during the cycle, and each report had approximately the same number of, uh, of comments. And the number of citations for working group one, so it's uh, uh, 14,000 uh, papers which were considered and cited uh, in the report. So imagine it's really a, a big, th that's the reason they call it assessment uh, of the literature because the purpose of the APC, they, they do not make any research by themselves, but they consider what has been published, only what has been published. And uh, just, I will come back, uh, just, uh, it's, it will help to respond approximately how, uh, who participate in, in the review. So here is only for France, uh, how we organize that. So once, uh, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, once at the beginning of cycle, the program is approved for the next seven to eight years. And usually the IPCC respects uh, the calendar almost perfectly. That was not the case here because of COVID-19, where we, uh, uh, they were delayed by about uh, one year compared to, but usually we know six months six years before it happens, we know when the first draft or the second draft of such report will be released. And so we are ready, naturally, uh, in advance, and we, uh, we organize uh, uh, the contact with uh, research groups, naturally, but also with uh, administration in the ministry. Or, uh, so you, you had a conference by a colleague from uh, AFD, and AFD is part of the organizations uh, which are approach to uh, provide comments uh, on the report. 
And so we, so we uh, usually we have uh, uh, the agreement of about 50 organizations for each report uh, saying that, okay, we are ready to help you in the van, to contribute to the review. So as focal point, I do not choose naturally who will, be, who will review the report, but each organization as a group, which is only known from, uh, from them, uh, will read uh, a part of the report. Naturally, nobody reads uh, 200 or 2,000 or 3,000 pages. They concentrate just on the points they, uh, the parties uh, they are experts in. And uh, they provide us comments. Actually, we receive, for example, typically uh, in France, we receive uh, about between 2,000 or 3,000 reports per uh, comments per report. So, and we have two weeks to uh, digest this 2,000 or 3,000 report because naturally they are contradictory. If I, for example, uh, some groups or experts will say, "Oh, this figure is very clear," and so on. And, uh, uh, naturally, we receive a comment where saying that, oh no, this figure is, uh, we understand nothing, uh, and so on. And so we have to make our own. Yes? This refers to the comments of the experts on the first draft, the quasi confidential one. Uh, no, no, it's not confidential. We, we, the governments have access before, just before the approval session. I, I will speak about that a bit later. So we have access to all the comments made. Uh, for the first order draft, second order draft, and so on. And so we, we know exactly all the comments which are made, but we do not know uh, which individual experts provided the comment. We, we know that it came from, when it comes from government, we say that uh, India, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and so on, uh, published, uh, fact, submitted this comment, so we have all the comments. And, and uh, so, Collectively, uh, we organize uh, what we call a consensus meeting of the different of the 50 groups uh, which are involved in France, and we decide which comments we will submit or not. Uh, and at the end, in truth, uh, there is a format to respect it and so on, and we send uh, the comments to the authors, and we have a firm deadline, and we know uh, four or five months ahead. Uh, which will be the cut-off date where it's not possible anymore to provide any comment. So I have mentioned a couple of times uh, what is... Uh, yeah. you that your role was to find the different people that will comment on the... Excuse, excuse me, yeah, David. Your role is to find the, the person that, that has to comment? N not the persons, the, the, the organizations. And the organization chooses themselves who are the reviewers. Mm -hmm. So we know the name, but at the end. And we provide at the end to the IPCC the full list of uh, individuals who took part to the review, but uh, the name of uh, 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 the scientists or the expert who provided a comment is not known from the IPCC. It's just a collective group. And so I mentioned that this, uh, the governments uh, play a major role in the approval of the summary for policymakers. So uh, I don't know whether uh, some of you have read carefully uh, uh, a summary for policymakers of the IPCC. It's typically 30 to 40 pages, uh, which summarize the main conclusion of one report. And at the end of cycle, it summarizes all uh, uh, the, uh, the findings made during the cycle. And so every sentence is uh, presented to the governments. It's in a big room, like in the UN, so you have each country. So uh, usually there are 150 countries present. And there are 195 members, but some countries usually do not uh, send a delegation, but 150 usually uh, do that. Uh, and uh, the authors of the report present on the screen. So it's fuzzy. Uh, it's, uh, we, <laughs> we fuzzy it uh, ourselves because uh, what I show here is not uh, allowed. Uh, you, you <laughs> nobody is allowed to see wha what happened really. So uh, that's the reason you cannot see the text. But uh, we, we have uh, 
in color the text which is submitted. And so if we say nothing, we, we have about uh, uh, 10 seconds to say something if we do not raise our flag. So the sentence is approved definitely. And, and so we go to the next one. And actually you imagine that uh, uh, each sentence uh, uh, has a good reason not to be, uh, not to please uh, a given country. And so we do that. Usually it lasts seven or eight days, but sometimes it happens, uh, it lasts 15 days and uh, part of it is day and night. And uh, until we agree on each sentence. And naturally when we, when a country doesn't agree, he has to say why. So he can say, uh, I do not understand the sentence. Uh, it happens sometimes, or the author try to, to make it clear. But also they say, ah, it doesn't reflect what is in the chapters behind. Uh, in the chapter, we find always something, uh, it's not exactly uh, the same. And the author uh, have to explain why they did that. And also, the, if they feel that uh, uh, the comment by governments is variable, so they change the sentence. And all sentences are changed at the end. Yes? Two yeah. um, <coughs> questions concerning the procedural matters. Considering it, it is a, len a lengthy process, mm. um, is there a tendency for the beginning of the document to be more thoroughly scrutinized than the end after eight days of a fairly mm. intensive type of, uh, of a scrut a scrutiny process? Is there a tendency for it to be uh, skewed towards the early part, the beginning of the report? No, it's, it's a very uh Interesting comment because uh, <coughs> uh, I would say that uh, it depends naturally on the countries. But uh, uh, the delegations usually there are some delegations have just one delegate, other one have uh, up to fifteen delegates. Typically, have this kind of look. Uh, uh, and, and there are some delegations uh, uh, where when. <coughs> They have some what we call a war target, and so they, uh, and some of them think that it's much better if we discuss a, a very difficult point when we are very short of time, because they know that uh, there will be uh, uh, some uh, some party we say uh, parties, but uh, so, some uh, governments. That's the name we use. Uh, uh, would be at the end in a position to approve something at the end, they w something that they would not have approved at the beginning. Because they want this report to be published and they do not want to, uh, that there is a, a, a failure of uh, the approval process. And so there is a game where some countries want to delay the first part, but indeed it's not examined uh, examine uh, consequently. <laughs> so we start by the beginning, but when uh, something lasts too long or when uh, there is a difficulty, so we park the part where we didn't have an agreement and we continue. And sometimes we jump to a figure, we jump to, uh, to the end of so on. Uh, and that's the role of the chair of the session. It's very important uh, to just in order to ensure that there is the best uh, possible distribution of time in order to, to have a fair uh, approval of any part. Yes, David? And when there is a rewriting, because the government did not agree with the sentence, it proposes the, a new sentence, or there is a group that is preparing a new sentence, or that or not? But first of all, it's not the chair who, who proposes uh, the Indeed, uh, as you see here, so you, you have here, it's a big room, usually we have 600, 600 people, uh, 600 delegates. Here you have the chair of session who is a scientist, usually it's not the chair of the IPCC in general. Uh, and uh, you, you have behind the ch first chair, the first row chair, you, you have the authors of the chapters. And when a government says that he doesn't agree with uh, the sentence uh, put in right and so on, so they made a, a small uh, meeting uh, with the uh, mics off and so they tried to accommodate the comments and to, 
to propose a response. And the response may often, but not always, the response is, oh, no, no, we, we confirm that uh, the sentence reflects the science which is detailed in, in the chapter of the report. And if the government insists, which is the case for, for many of them, so they try to accommodate by changing the sentence. And uh, sometimes they change sentence, but countries which were in agreement with the first versions disagree. And in that case, when we go nowhere, which is very frequent, so we have uh, what we call a contact group, which is set up, where we, we go in another room with less delegates, and we start to, to bargain and to, to, to try to make a deal. The meeting stops or No, 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 no. So the country with very few delegates, you have to decide whether they go to the contact group or they stay in the room. Yeah, yeah, so that's, at, usually there are countries who start by saying, no, no, I do not want to have a contact group because my, my country will not be able to attend it. And there are governments who, who try to, they fight against having contact groups. But it's also tactical, you know, and uh, uh, sometimes when the contact group fails, so there is a, a third way to, we go in a part of the main prayer room, just five or ten of us, and we discussed without sitting on a chair, just and pushing a bit with the shoulder and so on, until we, we, we agree and something. That's, uh, but, uh, so it means that uh, uh, at the end, all governments must agree with each sentence, but the authors also have to agree with the sentence itself. So there, are, there cannot be uh, in the report any sentence which is not in agreement uh, with uh, what the authors wanted. So that's really, there is a warranty that the science behind is respected. But there is not a single sentence from the first version, which uh, remains as it was, and uh, uh, we, we can say that uh, at least uh, half of the SPM is uh, completely rewritten during this primary process. I, I can give you a few examples. I, I don't know whether you, you saw these figures. It's a figure showing uh, 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 what are the scenario? It, it's, it's produced with uh, IAM. You, you had a conference on IAM just before, and uh, uh, there is th these figures uh, was just to show which kind of uh, scenario uh, was in uh, uh, consistent with limiting the warming to 1.5. Uh, this group about 100 scenario. Here we have another group. Uh, with for two degrees, and there was also here yeah, it's uh, 2030 where the what you call the NDCs. Uh, I don't know what it says that uh, the uh, uh, the engagement of the governments in order to decrease uh, their uh, uh, national greenhouse gas emission, and also here it's by well, sorry it's very wide because uh, uh, that's. Uh, what will be uh, the consequences of the implemented policies in 2020, uh, where they will lead in terms of uh, temperature. Naturally, uh, there is a big discrepancy because just knowing uh, what is the policy here, naturally we, we cannot have an accurate description of the consequences of, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, policies uh, almost uh, one century later. And, uh, that was uh, at here that's the past emission as you have the greenhouse gas emission per year and uh, here for from uh, 2000 to uh, 2015 and uh, one country but it was France in this case uh, we were not happy at all with this figure because if, if we so we were in when we started to discuss figure in 2022 in the uh, report of the working free so it seems that we were still we were here so there was nothing wrong indeed. So uh, looking at that, you say, oh, it's still time to decrease and to uh, uh, achieve 1.5 degrees. So we, we didn't see. And uh, we, we discussed almost for one week in order to add uh, the, the observed uh, greenhouse gas emission for, sorry, for 2015 and 2019. There's two points. 
you know, and it gives a very different feeling of the figure. That's, that's what we should do, and here that's what we have done. Since, uh, because the line here stopped in 2015, and 2015 was really too late. We were in 2022, so we say that there are already seven years of uh, observations which are not on this figure. And when we see that, that's what we have done, and we see that we are not at all on track. And that's something which was obtained during the approval process. You know, it was, not, it was one country suggesting that, and naturally there were countries saying, oh, no, 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 we don't need that. Uh, it will make the, the figure more complex, and so on, and so on. It, and other ones saying, oh, it will be good. And so. So that's an example of uh, what changed. And another one is uh, uh, there was a special report on the global warming of 1.5 degrees published in uh, 2018. Well, I don't know whether we heard about uh, that, but at that time, that was the first time we had a special we, we a report of the IPCC uh, after the Paris Agreement. And the authors uh, proposed a sentence saying that the NDCs, the National uh, Determined Contribution of the, of the Governments, submitted uh, in the context of the Paris Agreement, were not online with the objective of 1.5 or 2 degrees. And Saudi Arabia won didn't want at all to speak about NDCs. Nobody understood the reason for that. And at the end, after a lot, a lot of discussion, so the sentence which was approved was this one, where we do not mention NDCs. We, NDC is not mentioned. It was not mentioned in SPM at all. But we, Paris Agreement is, uh, is mentioned. And so we say, currently, national state in mitigation ambition has submitted under the Paris. It was for NDCs. But uh, Saudi Arabia didn't want that people understand that. And so at the end, they were too, uh, very too tough. And we, we decided to accept that. But they were not happy at all. Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia published, uh, uh, ma made a statement. And this statement is recorded uh, in the uh, minutes uh, of the session, saying that uh, they disagree with the fact that uh, NDCs are mentioned, but NDCs are not. So it's, it's to say, and uh, we know uh, at that time Saudi Arabia was very, very difficult in, uh, in the discussion. And uh, uh, so it's very difficult to uh, uh, not to give them some, something to go back home. Otherwise, they would have uh, not adopted uh, the report, and, uh, which would have been very, very bad. But anyway, these disputes, which just is how. I didn't want to interrupt you in mid-sentence, but I have a question concerning the... Uh, you said at the beginning that it's not a political statement or that it's not like a political policy-making tool in that sense. It's used for it, but it's not like um, stating for any state what to do. But as it is such a political process mm. in the creation, how is this aligned and how, like, how is this a scientific... I mean, I see that it's a lot of scientific work, but I also see a lot of political involvement and I see contradiction there. Maybe. Yes, that's, indeed, we are always uh, very, very close to the line, uh, it's the borderline between something which is policy prescriptive or policy relevant. And at that time, we do not know the reason because Saudi Arabia Ratify, uh, had already ratified Paris Agreement. So we were almost sure that there would be no difficulties to, to, to refer to one of the main tools of the Paris Agreement is for the countries to say how much greenhouse gas they will they intend to emit within the next 10 years. That's the famous NDCs. NDCs is it, it, uh, it's a declaration of the intention of a country. It's, it's not something which is constraining, but a country says, I will emit XXX uh, uh, million tons of CO2, of methane, and so on. But naturally, uh, if they do not that, uh, there is nothing uh, constraining. But they have to face their own population, their people. And they say that we, we permitted that, but we have not achieved it. And nobody wants that in the case of climate change. That's the reason. And Saudi Arabia didn't want to have any mention to NDCs at that time. And we were a bit surprised, but uh, the, 
So, so we, we had a very, very difficult negotiation about that, and uh, nobody was very happy with the result. Uh, and we suffered by uh, uh, this dispute uh, for several years. And uh, for example, the UNFCCC, uh, the Convention for Climate Change, uh, never welcomed uh, the special report 1.5 because Saudi Arabia didn't want that. And since everything is, is made by consensus, so, and for many years, but it has changed now, and Saudi Arabia came back uh, more constructively. Uh, and it's very nice now working with them, which was not the case uh, five years ago. So I will continue because otherwise should be close to the end. But the IPCC has also outreach activities and I will not enter that. So I have, I have mentioned uh, UNFCCC and UNFCCC it's a convention of the United Nations and that's where the policy happens. It's not science, you know, it's really negotiation for climate change with uh, 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 promises and also uh, uh, targets, long-term climate targets and so on, which are produced under UNFCCC. And uh, it was created in 1992, so four years after the creation of the IPCC, during the Earth Summit in, in, in Rio. And uh, uh, the uh, Article 2 of the Convention says that the ultimate objective is to stabilize the concentration of greenhouse gas in order to avoid to have a climate uh, Against which, we, we, against which we will not be able to, to adapt. And the Paris Agreement is a major achievement, actually, uh, of uh, UNFCCC during this uh, 21st uh, Conference of Party, COP, the COP21. So, uh, when, when did you say it's a major agreement in Paris? What's, what do you consider a big agreement? Because all the previous agreements, there was the Kyoto Protocol okay. Agreement. Uh, uh, happened, but it, it concerned just uh, uh, the developed countries. And the Paris Agreement is, is the only one agreement signed under the Convention uh, which involves all countries uh, of the UN, obviously, because we are not in the IPCC, uh, well, it's almost similar, but uh, all, all the UN uh, countries uh, uh, are engaged by the Paris Agreement. So uh, here you have, uh, I will go a bit more quickly now, uh, it's a slide produced by the IPCC where you see two parallel lines. One is the life of the IPCC and here it's what happened in the UNFCCC at the same time. So the IPCC started and uh, we, we had uh, uh, two years later uh, the creation of the UNFCCC. Uh, the Kyoto Protocol used the second assessment report of the IPCC. The third assessment report uh, was the first one focusing really on adaptation and uh, UNFCCC uh, used it uh, uh, for starting the discussion on loss and damage and so on. Uh, the two degrees limit, which is uh, uh, in the convention, uh, appeared as the main goal because of the work of the four assessment reports uh, and which helped to start thinking about the Paris Agreement. Paris Agreement was uh, uh, agreed just one year after the fifth assessment report of the IPCC. And then here you have the sixth assessment report with special report on the ocean, on land, and, uh, uh, and the sixth assessment report of the IPCC were the main scientific input for the first global stock take of the UNFCCC of the Paris Agreement, which uh, was decided just uh, three days ago. So I will continue a bit so I go quicker. So uh, I will not detail that, but uh, just a few slides on the major results which fed up the works uh, under the Paris Agreement or UNFCCC. Naturally, you have the observation of the climate system. Here is temperature, but it's also uh, uh, the temperature of the ocean, acidification, the content of greenhouse gas in the atmosphere and so on. And the IPCC produced that, also the causes of the warming, and the UNFCCC used these results for their work. You have the projections made uh, by the scientific community, but assessed by the IPCC. At least it's a figure from the 
that's the first figure of uh, the working group one report. And uh, you see the projection according to different uh, greenhouse gas scenario of temperature, global ocean pH, uh, sea level rise, and so on. Uh, something which is very important, not necessarily easy to understand that what we call the burning embers. Uh, we see that uh, uh, in the IPCC report now, uh, uh, at least since uh, about uh, uh, 12 years, where we see for different degrees of warming, the level of risk associated for different systems. Here it's a, a, a unique frigid system, extreme weather events and so on, but we find that also for the ocean, for the agriculture, for the economy, and so on. And here in this report, which was published in, in March, so we see the difference. Each column is for the fifth assessment report uh, seven years ago and now, and we see that the scientific literature shows that uh, for the same level of global warming expected, the risk which are associated are now assessed as higher as they were. Uh, also, a major thing was the carbon budget, uh, because in the past, uh, we thought that uh, once we stabilize the concentration in greenhouse gas, the climate will continue to warm up, but that's not anymore uh, uh, the knowledge, yes, and uh, it will continue to warm up, but only by uh, 0.1 degrees or something like that. And this diagram shows that the long-term temperature is in first uh, uh, <coughs> approximation is something which is linear with a cumulative uh, CO2 emissions. Th that's something which is not trivial at all, but th that's a result of many, many, many works showing that uh, it's almost linear. And so it was assessed by the IPCC uh, during the fifth assessment report, and it was used to know exactly what we should do if we want to limit, for example, here to two degrees, so we use the burning embers to, to say that two degrees we can still adapt. It's not too risky. But two degrees, so it means that we do not emit more than 3,000 gigaton of accumulated CO2. And the scenarios here in color, the ellipse in color, compatible with less than 3,000 are scenarios where we have a decrease between 40 and 70 percent of the CO2 uh, in 2050. So that, that's the mechanism which uh, leads to the amount of decrease in CO2 that we have to achieve if we want not to, to uh, uh, go higher than two degrees. So it's just an example, but uh, the notion of carbon budget is something which is really, really important. Also, something that I will not detail, but uh, the IPCC in this last report has uh, identified uh, what is the potential in terms of mitigation of different approach, uh, solar, photovoltaic solar energy, wind energy, nuclear, and so on, at, at which cost? Uh, so the higher the color, for red is for more than 100 US dollar by uh, uh, ton CO2 uh, limited. And so you, you see, and that's that produced by a very huge body of literature. So, but the, the role of the IPC to physicize and showing that there are solutions. And I will show a last one figure from the IPCC, which is, uh, but which has been refused by the US. It was in, a, it was supposed to be in the SPM of uh, the sixth assessment report published in March. <laughs> that was this figure at first. But uh, the US did not accept it. Or this figure has a purpose. In color, you have the amount in, uh, uh, between uh, 2015 and 2019 of uh, the, finan the finance uh, provided by sector or by economy to uh, mitigate climate change. And uh, here, in gray, uh, much higher, that's the amount which will be necessary every year between 2020 and 2030. And the US didn't accept this figure because uh, they mentioned developing countries and developed countries. And the US do not want to use that anymore now because 
the definition is based on uh, the situation in 1992 when UNFCCC was created, of 30 years ago, and now naturally uh, the world has changed a lot. But <laughs> all the uh, countries which are uh, in the group of uh, developing countries, for example Saudi Arabia, in the developing countries, in spite of uh, the huge amount of uh, their GPD and so on, but they, they want to, to stay that. And the US refused this figure, which is not in the SPM, but which is in the report, in the longer report, because the governments are not allowed to change the longer report, only the summary for policy making. So it's an example. But it's very important for many countries to evaluate how much funding they need. Okay, uh, so my conclusion, but I, I will uh, uh, go quickly now because uh, I'm a bit out of time. Uh, so you, you had naturally about uh, COP28, uh, which uh, was, uh, which ended uh, two days ago uh, on Wednesday. And uh, m most of the discussion, you know, this transitioning away from fossil fuel and so on, and all the discussion which lasted for two weeks, uh, uh, it was on a part of a decision related what we call to the global stock take. That's a mechanism in the Paris Agreement where every five years, the governments sh do collectively an a stock, a stock stake, so we evaluate how the Paris Agreement was applied and the progress made uh, and the problems and uh, all, all those things. And uh, uh, the, it's really, the, it's the art of the Paris Agreement, the global stock take, because it, it's, it's what makes that every five years there would be really uh, an evaluation of uh, how uh, the Paris Agreement is working and how we can if we are not on track, which is the case, how we can, uh, what, what we should do in order to respect the target of uh, two degrees and uh, doing everything to, to stay uh, under 1.5 if we can. And so in this, you have a number of paragraphs, you have four, 14, 15, etc. That's where there is a reference to the IPCC. And I will not detail it, but uh, you can see on different aspects. And once again, so you can read it, it's uh, on the web. Uh, I will not detail, but it, it says, for example, here it remains that uh, uh, all the co co when we say recognize, it means uh, the COP, means all the, the countries, CMA, uh, recognize the findings of uh, the IPCC, saying that, for example, if we want to uh, respect uh, uh, limit warming to 1.5, uh, greenhouse gas emission must peak between 2020 and that's the latest before 2025. That's a kind of uh, uh, message coming from the science which is reminded by the whole community of countries uh, in the UNF troubles. And uh, so just a very last slide. In this decision of UNFCCC, there is also an invitation of the IPCC to continue to, to work and to uh, align its uh, timeline in order to provide uh, the next, the second global stock tech in 2028 with the very latest uh, information on uh, science. Okay, thank you, that's all. Okay, questions? <coughs> yes. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I'm um, a sales from, um, from Portugal. Um, I'd like to ask something concerning the um, 1.5 degrees, <coughs> from the one, concerning the 1.5 degrees target. And uh, it's subdivided, kind of subdivided, so personally, do you think the 1.5 is still attainable? And with more vague, from what I was following um, the, the the COP discussion yes. um, in um, in, United, uh, in, the, in Dubai, and it seems that there has been a tacit, if not um, declared, abandoning of the 1.5 degrees objective. Uh, do you think that is the case? <coughs> no. Well, I'm still, I, I, I'm, I'm still employed by the French government, but uh, 
I, I will uh, retire in April. So <laughs> I think that the risk <laughs> are very low for me to I say again, that. I can ask again in April. Then. Uh, 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 no, I, I, it, it will be very, very difficult because as mentioned in the decision uh, I have shown uh, in my last slide and in one of my last slides, it was written that a condition assessed by the IPCC uh, for 1.5 not to be, uh, to have a, a temperature not higher than 1.5 is that, that the emissions peak, the CO2 emissions peak uh, before uh, 2020 and 2025. And uh, naturally, we do not see any signal for that yet. And so, we, except if there is a big war, uh, where, <laughs> uh, where in that case uh, the economy will collapse, or uh, if, we, if there is no such event, and naturally I do not want such an event, but uh, uh, we, we do not see how the transition could be rapid enough. I indeed, uh, this numbers, they are almost known for 30 or 40 years. And uh, there was, at the beginning of the year 2000, there were some scientists, economists mainly, saying that if we do not really change at the very beginning of the 21st century uh, the curve of our emission, so the efforts to be done just to uh, no, not to reach, at the time 1.5 was not mentioned, but just to limit global warming to a level where we could adapt, it will be too late because it will be too costly. Uh, so that's what happened for, we, we, before the Paris Agreement, we saw no signal at all of any inversion of standards. Uh, the IPCC says for the first times, the, the rate of increase of greenhouse gas emissions between the decade 2010 to 2019 is lower, it's half lower, than the increase rate between 2000. So it doesn't mean that it decreased, but the second derivative is negative now. Which, no, me, yeah. ah, so, so it means we, no, no, actually, I'm not uh, optimistic about that, but uh, I, I say that something happens. That there, is, there is no doubt about that. But there are, there are so huge private and in, not only uh, private, but also uh, the interest of uh, some government is they are so huge regarding uh, continuing to exploit fossil fuel. That's, so they fight it so, so hard against uh, uh, doing something really efficient that th that's the reason that we are so late. And uh, when you see, uh, I show this curve because now uh, 2023, uh, we will, uh, uh, it will be almost 140 degree above uh, the historical, uh, what you call pre-industrial historical uh, uh, temperature. But indeed, uh, it's due part, in part due to the El Nino phenomenon. Probably 2024, if El Nino continues, could be a bit higher than 20. 23, so we will have two points here, but probably we will continue to be on, on such a curve uh, for some time, which means that reaching 1.5 degrees, it's not a single year, it's the average for 10 years. That's the definition in the Paris Agreement. So it doesn't mean that when we will uh, reach 1.5 degrees for the first time, it doesn't mean that we have not respected one of the goal of the Paris Agreement. So it's so uh, we, there is still some hope. I, I think that two degrees is something which is achievable. Then, uh, two degrees, naturally, it's almost a double of what we already had because we, we had 1.1 degrees during the last decade. Uh, and we see already a lot of impacts. Very, uh, some of the impacts are even higher than the, uh, the scientific committee uh, expected uh, uh, in the past. So we will see, but 1.5 degrees is something which uh, uh, the IPCC says that it will be reached in the early 2030s. That's what is in the report. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Owen from the UK. Uh, my question is about your role as the selector of the contributing organisations. Um, just about the process of, of that selection. Was there a framework you had to follow? Um, how much 
freedom or autonomy did you have to direct the process? And also, what was the potential impact for, I don't know, lobbying towards your position and uh, hmm. your role? Yes, it's good, a good question. <laughs> uh, so what we, indeed, uh, uh, we tried to have it as broad as we could. And to do that, for example, regarding the scientific community, so we ask, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, for instance, CPU, so the conference of the president of university, which is the body which gathers all universities in France. And we have approached them, asking them to participate to the review. And so which means that just choosing the highest level possible in terms of uh, 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 governance of the French university, we were sure, at least we, we do not know exactly what they did, which is another thing. But we say that please provide us uh, diffuse this uh, call for uh, experts uh, for comments and uh, so it seems that in some labs they say that they receive it from uh, the conference of the university they receive it uh, the same call from CNRS from the conference uh, national uh, council for research <laughs> no national centers for uh, research uh, and uh, so, in terms of scientific community, so we, it was completely, uh, and we refuse no group at all. We refuse a lot of comments, uh, approximately a lot. Uh, we, we had about 15% of comments received that we have not transmitted to the IPCC because we thought that they were wrong. In some cases, uh, uh, they say, I uh, say this sentence says that, uh, but it's in contradiction. And we say, no, it, it doesn't say that. Uh, or sometimes we had some uh, climatosceptics, which say that uh, completely crazy comments saying that uh, uh, you forget that uh, the climate was much colder uh, uh, 40 million ago, or not 40, but uh, 2 million ago. Or something. So uh, this kind of comment, has, has, it was not because it was good, but it was no use to transmit that to the APCC. Uh, regarding the administration, so we, we picked up about five or six ministries, depending on the scope of the report. Uh, and we always had the Ministry of the Economy, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Research, naturally, and uh, in most cases, the Ministry of Agriculture. And among the scientific organization, we had the Commissariat for uh, um, uh, nuclear energy, atomic energy. And so naturally we had some comments uh, saying that the role of nuclear uh, power uh, is not, uh, nuclear energy is not uh, highlighted uh, at the value we should have. So, so we, we transmitted some of these comments, but uh, we, we rewrote most of the comments, uh, which was a huge work. Uh, but th there was, it, the interest indeed what we see is that the more comments we have, the more insurance we have, that the offers we have, uh, the best way just to uh, ask themselves whether what they write is, is right or not. And so if there, if there is too much, well, the, the inconvenience is that, uh, inconvenience for them is that uh, naturally it's too much work and so we did get less time to important comments. But if we choose to filter by ourselves one comment, so maybe we, we miss the opportunity to improve something in the report. That's, that's right. I'm, I'm here. So my name is Ahwar from Tajikistan, Major A. So I have a lot of questions, but I'm gonna go with only with hmm. like few things. Um, like in the current situation when you have multipolar power, and you have emergence of blocks, like different blocks. And uh, from your experience, and you have high likely exchanged with a lot of experts from different countries, uh, how do you think the nations should collaborate or can collaborate uh, 
like more effectively to address this global climate challenge. So, for so <laughs> one thing is we have a lot of theoretical backgrounds, as you have just mentioned, from IPCC, and a lot of people are included in these, a lot of reports, rejections, and acceptance. But uh, what about the reality of the negotiations and collaboration between these countries? It's, it's very very important uh, question which which is not easy at all uh, so w i mentioned a couple of times saudi arabia uh, because uh, for a long time they tried they, they did their best in order to uh, limit the awareness about the consequences of uh, climate change uh, but they changed their mind because uh, they also see that uh, uh, they need, uh, they suffer from climate change by themselves. And the, uh, usually there is what we call the Arab groups, that's the name they give them themselves to, to their groups. And, uh, usually they, they always had the same position and Saudi Arabia was carrying their flag. That was what happened in the, flag, in the past. But uh, in this group, there are also countries uh, which consider that in, even if they have a huge amount of income from oil, uh, from fossil fuel, gas and oil. So even with that, they can be a bit fragile themselves because of climate change for many reasons. First, uh, naturally, they, are, uh, they have already a limited capacity in terms of agriculture. But they try, for example, Saudi Arabia is not, uh, they, they try to, they, they try to avoid to import too much food from abroad, because they know that in case of uh, very difficult relationships, uh, economic collapse, it might happen, all these things. And they are very aware that uh, under uh, a warmer and drier climate, it could be really catastrophic for them. And so I, I think that there is a group, a community of countries which completely share the fact that climate change is dangerous, which was not the case 15 or 10 years ago, because we believe at that time that the benefit was higher than the inconvenience. And so it makes a group, a very huge group of countries. And the, the poorest countries, which are not naturally uh, uh, oil or fossil fuel uh, pro producers, uh, sometimes they, uh, they make some kind of compromise with uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, because of diplomatic relationships, it's very frequent. We, 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 we see that also with, uh, with China, which has a very strong influence on, uh, on developing countries. And that's the reason that Saudi Arabia wants to be considered officially as a developing country, as not a developing And so in terms of blocks, we can say there is a block of developed country and a block of developing country, which is really uh, uh, an historical division. It came from the time, uh, say, of the creation of UNFCCC in 1992. But uh, uh, the world has changed. And probably you heard about uh, uh, the agreement uh, which was reached at the very last time in, uh, uh, in uh, Dubai. Uh, it, it was also because uh, uh, China and the US were able to share a common position, which is amazing because really, if we look at the world now, which is very complex, probably, well, naturally we mention Russia a lot because uh, there is a war and there is no war between China and the US, but th the main confrontation from a political view is really between the US and between China. And regarding the climate negotiation, uh, both continue to, to work constructively. And you know COP21, well, we were very proud in France because it was uh, under the French leadership, uh, diplomacy and so on, but <laughs> being, I, I was part of the negotiation team at the time. And uh, so we know that uh, Paris Agreement is mainly something which was wanted by uh, China and the US because China is very, very much afraid about the consequences of climate change without benefiting of uh, uh, the income from fossil fuel. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, uh, 
I have not fully, uh, I, I think nobody can really respond in detail to you. But we see that uh, uh, even if the, the world is very uh, uh, difficult, the geopolitical situation is very difficult now, in terms of climate change, the war between uh, the, the Russian war against Ukraine uh, has not really changed the negotiation. And so it means that uh, so the logic behind this is quite different. And, uh, we have the small island countries, where, uh, what we call seats, small island uh, developing states. There are 40 countries, which is a huge amount. Uh, I spoke about consensus, so each country has agree. And it's 20% uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of the number of countries in the world. And so for them, it's just a matter of life. Above 1.5 degrees, so the ocean will continue to, to raise. Uh, and a significant part, uh, and for some of them, most uh, of their land will disappear. And, uh, nobody contests that. Uh, even Saudi Arabia in the past, uh, three or four years ago, when they were still a bit difficult, so they, they didn't contest that it was a matter of life for some countries. Uh, good night. My name is Camila from Peru. I uh, I will uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm well, old. I have a question. Uh, well, uh, it is just most regarding to the report because one thing is just making a report and the other is just like a making a treaty, a treaty that it is more complex. But in the case of the report, there are some countries that are not part of it because I think like it's important to consider in different voices. And what are the reasons that those countries are not part of the, of the um, development of the report? See, uh, indeed, uh, <coughs> uh, I mentioned the Bureau where the scientists are, are elected, but there are only 34. So there are only 34 countries which are represented with a membership of 195 countries. So you see it's one per six. But there is a division in terms of uh, distribution, in terms of region, which makes that it happens during the election. It's, uh, you know, the election year is... Uh, so we, we discuss, we meet in the corridor, so there is a kind of deals and so on. And at the end, we reach uh, a distribution in terms of geography, which is really uh, everyone feels that he has a representative in the bureau. If, even if it's not his own country, it's, it's a friend. Uh, that, that's for the bureau. But the bureau organizes the work, but the, the bureau doesn't write the report. The report is written by authors, and this author, there are thousands of them in one cycle. And so it's not from every country, but almost not far from it. And, uh, so, and there is, it's just naturally there are countries where you have no experts in, in a domain of a report. And in that case, there will be no author from this country, because the authors need to have uh, uh, papers published on the subject and so on. But anyway, uh, uh, I think that there is very, f sometimes there are countries complaining about the fact that the report was not written uh, by uh, a fair distribution of uh, uh, national nationalities or expertise and so on. But in most cases, I think that uh, countries recognize that uh, there is really a very wide scientific community uh, and that uh, uh, when the offer are selected, there is really a, uh, it's really a goal to ensure inclusivity in terms of uh, uh, geographical distribution, but also gender, also age and expertise uh, to avoid to have two old scientists. And, uh, oh. uh, hi, I'm, I'm Jam from Colombia. I have a question about What's the role of uh, CCS technologies? I mean, what role play carbon capture and storage technologies in the mitigation pathways scenarios that usually are shown in the IPCC? And if you think that, I mean, if they are used, do you think that they can lead to overly optimistic scenarios about our capacity to reduce emissions? Uh, because there is a kind of criticism or skepticism about the, capa the capacity of these technologies to be used like wide scale or is it just that actually they are not too important in the report? So that's my question. Yes. Uh, 
Good question. I think so you, you mentioned it because you heard about the discussion during COP28 on uh, CCS. Yeah. Because CCS, naturally, <coughs> it's something which is uh, promoted by uh, well, the producer of uh, fossil fuel, naturally, uh, with OPEP, but also the US, uh, Japan, and uh, UK <laughs> sometimes promote CCS, but it depends on the. Uh, well, it changed uh, from one year to another one, but uh, uh, and there are other countries, for example, in EU, uh, which are really against CCS. That's the case of uh, Germany, France, uh, we have a few countries. And if you look, uh, I, I went very rapidly on this figure, but that is one of the potential uh, of mitigation and the cost. And here, CCS is here. You have CCS here, and here you have. CCS with use, uh, which is even smaller. And you see that it's very, very, very low. It's less than one gigaton per year of potential at a very high cost, you see. The color is red. And so that's based on that work that there were many countries during COP28 claiming that we, we can mention CCS, but uh, we cannot say that it's a solution. Because naturally, it's, uh, th there is... So, so there are some voices saying that ah, but if we uh, just, uh, for example, if we produce electricity at the place where we exploit the oil or gas, and we, if we trap the CO2 emitted, which is technological, it exists already, it's, uh, it works, 90 to 95 percent of uh, CO2 can be captured. And if we re-inject this uh, CO2 uh, in the uh, oil re reservoir at the same time. So we produce electricity and uh, we emit no CO2. Th that's true. Uh, we, we, uh, naturally, uh, you need to have uh, warranties that uh, this CO2, which is trapped uh, in very deep uh, 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 soil uh, under the ocean, for example, or so on, uh, that it will not uh, uh, pop up again or if you believe in the uh, capacity of engineers to uh, ensure that. So, you know, but you see that uh, the cost and uh, the limited number of permanent reservoirs makes that it's something which is not... We can do that a bit, but we cannot say that that's a solution to continue to exploit the oil. And so that using that, that's something which has been accepted by uh, this figure by all countries. So you see that, you say uh, uh, there is no not a lot to be expected for that. Hello, uh, I'm Bjarne from Germany. Um, I'm actually quite impressed by, by the institution of the IPCC because it's a very democratic process to get like um, um, kind of a consensus between researchers from one field. Lots of researchers. You know, we saw 23,000. It's very, quite astounding. So I'm wondering why were climate scientists uh, as a profession specifically so so successful in connecting with each other and then coming up with an institutional structure that is so relevant today for example we don't see the international panel for epidemiologists or for biodiversity experts or artificial intelligence researchers this is quite unique in my opinion uh, and do you think is this a model for other um, research fields as well Yes, uh, I will uh, just show. Uh, I went very rapidly, sorry, because uh, I wanted. Uh, I went through this uh, slide without uh, mentioning the, the, the last. But that was really. Uh, I, I wanted to develop a bit on that. Uh, I don't know the reason, but uh, just to remark, for example, uh, when COVID nineteen happened, so we we had very different voice at the international level, and uh, so. Uh, uh, the, the World Health Organization didn't work as UNFCCC or the IPC does not. Uh, there, there are objective and uh, uh, very understandable reasons. For example, the fact that we, when you, you have to fight uh, a pandemic like COVID-19, you have to do that very quickly. And you know the IPCC does very slowly. No, uh, uh, five years to write a report, so yes. Yeah, some people will say it's crazy, so it doesn't make sense. But it's also because 
the climate doesn't change so so rapidly. You know, it changed, uh, but uh, it started when you, if you, the IPCC and when UNFCCC were were created. So it was at the times where the f we were not sure that the warming itself had already started, and so it was rather easy at that time. At, uh, at the beginning, Saudi Arabia, so they, they didn't care about the IPCC. The, the political attention about the IPCC work came later, when it, it became obvious that we, we, something had to be done. Otherwise, the world itself, well, the world will, will survive, but uh, uh, the, the economy, uh, uh, our biodiversity, uh, there are so many things at stake which will be in danger. That it, it came a bit later, and so I think that there was a, a, a way of working all together, which started at a time where the tension was not very high, and it survived. Uh, among the scientists, uh, I think it's like in every domain, so they, they compete against themselves and publish a, a letter. Sometimes there are, uh, there are tricks. It, it happens like in other uh, domains, so they, they are not purer, they are, they are not better, they are, they are human uh, uh, as the other one. But the fact that the IPCC is also a way for them to, to meet, to assess their own state of knowledge. Uh, uh, I'm not sure to be clear, but uh, there is not one single reason. So he, it started like that and it continued up to now. Uh, and the fight is mainly against the governments and not against, uh, it's governments against each other, it's not the scientific community uh, against each other. And, uh, and for, for uh, WHO, for example, say it's more, so they, are, we have, they have to react very rapidly, so they have experts they know, and these experts, they, <laughs> they do uh, what they can to stay very close to, uh, to the organization in order to to be uh, uh, called as expert and so on. So there is a, a kind of game, some lobbying and so on sometimes, uh, which is not the case in the IPCC. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. One last question. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rashid from Afghanistan. Um, Considering the vast number of comments received from different disciplines, government, other institutions, especially from the government side, how does the IPCC and um, relevant um, study groups deal with the controversial comments, especially from the policy perspective and other um, pot potential um, controversial comments? Are they address this using like um, participatory voting or is it like each um, um, government institutions that have um, posed a comment or um, attending the, sem the meetings, workshops in order, or they are discussing the comments and they eventually come up with a consensus? Or is it done like behind the scene, I don't know, um, based on a consensus of um, the experts? How is it like addressed? If, if I may, I would also put my question together because beyond this controversial issue, when you mentioned 51,000 contributions, so how do you deal comments, comments. Uh, comments, comments. Yeah. how do you deal with uh, uh, 51 I mean in France uh, the team uh, I mean the, you have 51,000 comments who is reading those 51,000 comments so it, it's two complementary questions about how you yeah. deal with uh, hello uh, just here yeah, when I have shown the uh, uh, organization of the IPCC. Here in that part, it's a scientific community which is a member of the IPCC but which produces a report. And you see the authors of the report, the expert reviewers, the ones which provide comments. And here I have not mentioned it. There are the review editors which are appointed by the Bureau. Uh, they are scientists and their role here is to collect all the comments to diffuse them to the authors and to ensure that every comment receives a response. So there is, uh, it's not 
it's not the response of the complete response to your question, but to show that there is somebody in charge of how, dealing. How many are there? Uh, there are usually one or two per chapter. A, a report <laughs> is between five and uh, 20 chapters. So it, 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 it can be a, a huge amount of. So they do not write the report, but they ensure that the authors take into account the comments received. And the authors have to provide a response. There is a very big uh, sheet, Excel sheet, where you, you can see uh, the comment and uh, the response given by, by the author. And after that, you know, when uh, there is a comment, uh, if it's in chapter, so uh, the chapter is organized, there is a kind of hierarchy in, in the, the author, there is a coordinating lead authors. There are usually two or three per, per chapters, and you have the authors themselves, which are responsible of section or subsection and so on of, of the chapter. And uh, uh, the coordinating lead author are in charge of uh, all the discussions which arise inside the, the author's group of the chapters. And probably there is no unique way to deal with uh, this kind of uh, controversial discussion. So that the quality of CLA, their character, their uh, individual engagement, which ensures that uh, uh, there will be uh, a consensus which will rapidly occur. When there is no consensus inside chapter, usually we, we know that because we, we have some <laughs> not spies, but uh, uh, sometimes there are offers just uh, uh, engaging directly with the focal point of a country, saying, oh, uh, I cannot work properly, and so on. And so we, we, we can have, in some cases, discussion. But uh, in most cases, uh, uh, when there is such kind of controversy, uh, it's behind the curtains that it's solved. And so I have no such. Uh, regarding the comments received by uh, during the review process, for example, in France, so uh, I, I had a very small team. Uh, two or three uh, working with me. So we uh, usually we, we took two weeks to consider the 3,000 mm -hmm. comments we received. And so we, we, we made the first uh, uh, choice where we, we, it's, it's, we, we use uh, PDF comments. And so we gave out all the comments received in PDF. So we see a page sometimes uh, with uh, underlining, as we see with and uh, so we see oh, a lot of comments and in the single sentence. So we, we, we paid a lot of attention to it, which means if there are 10 comments on some sentence, probably there is. A, so we took that. And so we made a first uh, selection, uh, putting in green the comments that we, we, we are uh, willing to submit them to the IPCC. So it was about 50% uh, of. Uh, uh, the comments we received. Uh, as I say, 10 to 15 percent we put in red, which re rejected by us, or by me, uh, essentially, because uh, uh, I didn't think that it was relevant or uh, some comments were not understandable and so on. But in each case, I responded to the, the expert reviewers, the reasons that I, I proposed not to submit the, the comment. And we had uh, uh, about 25 to 30 percent of our comments, uh, we, which were highlighted in orange, that's the comments that uh, 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 I had the feeling that it requested to be solved, uh, to have a, con a discussion and to reach a consensus, a collective discussion with all the representative of uh, the 50 organizations which were uh, uh, approached. And, uh, we, we organized a big meeting lasting a full day uh, to examine all the French, the comments submitted by the French government. And uh, so we, 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 each time we sent all the comments with the color green, the ones supposed to be transmitted, orange or red, to the groups two days before the meeting in order that everybody has the opportunity to see what we intend to do. And during the meeting, we, we looked at all the orange, we started with the orange comments. Mm -hmm. And f after each discussion, I proposed a way forward. 
submit or not, rewrite, and so on. And we, at the end of the meeting, we, we offered, uh, we, we were offering the possibility for everyone to, to go back to a red or to a green comment if it, it doesn't agree. And we, we had very, very uh, positive feedbacks. That's the first time that we, we did that during the cycle. And so we are very, very happy to, uh, to participate in a, in a collective analysis of comments coming from other groups. And sometimes the discussion was very difficult, but uh, always uh, uh, I, had, I never received any complaint uh, from the organizations and the experts uh, taking part in it. But it's a lot of work. Huh? Maybe just a very last thing. We, we met in a, in a committee, in a panel uh, at UNESCO, and we, we were discussing a, in particular about a topic which was humid, humid heat. Mm. Uh, and in the last uh, summary for policymakers, by page 14 or 16, I don't remember, there is a chart mm. about the impacts of humid heat and the potential extremely uh, negative effect on some regions of the world. Mm in the short run uh, and uh, as I understood one country uh, which mm. was uh, really impacted by this uh, by this humid heat mm. didn't want this chart to be in the report mm. how, how can uh, how do you explain how, how, how we could also put this into the, the report but, uh, and it, I, I know we, we can mention the country maybe no or Yes, but yeah, in, I, I, at the end, yeah. we... It's India. <laughs> yes, India. Yeah. Uh, so there were... Well, mm. I, India uh, claimed that the results, which were in the figure, <coughs> came from a single paper, but indeed it was a meta, a meta review. So it, it was one paper, but uh, <laughs> built on uh, many, many uh, scientific papers. But uh, they said... Oh, as David just said, uh, the, the main concern for India is that uh, looking at uh, the number of days with deadly conditions, that was uh, 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 the term used in this figure, the deadly condition due to uh, uh, humid, uh, humidity and air temperature, it was a very huge amount from India. And so they, naturally when they, they saw this graph, so they were, uh, they, they looked in detail to uh, at uh, where it came from, and uh, where it made sense. And they fight it for a few days in order just to get rid of this uh, uh, chart. And uh, it was a mapping of uh, a, a global, there was a global map with all countries. And, uh, Very interesting map. I mean, it's probably yeah, yeah, yeah. the most frightening yeah. map in the, the report. And indeed, <laughs> we, uh, the consensus we each is to add a footnote in the in the figure, saying that uh, the number of uh, the, the condition considered as deadly were mainly based on observation of people having uh, died from a, a warm temperature in occidental countries. It's written that it was mainly in, uh, uh, they say Western countries. I don't remember exactly the name. You can see it's a figure four or something like that uh, of the SPM of uh, this report. And in that case, we were sure that India would not accept uh, the figure if this footnote were not, uh, were not reproduced. And so at the end, we, we accepted it. And, uh, but if should they have not accepted that, they, there would be two things. One, not accepting the report, but it was it would have been a very huge responsibility for India, and we were sure that they, they would not go that way. Otherwise, they, they could have done like uh, Saudi Arabia did for the special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees. It means adding uh, a footnote in the SPM or in the report of the session the media session saying that uh, we disagree with this figure. But uh, we, we know that if one country rejects the part of the report, the value, the universal value of the report decreases, and that's something we, we, we try to avoid as much as possible. Thank you very much, Eric. Yeah.